in last session we have learned about amplitude isn't it what is amplitude amplitude is a maximum displacement of a particle from its mean position in either direction is called as amplitude and what is time period the time taken to complete one oscillation is known as time period and it is denoted by second and the what is vibration the to and fro motion of an object is known as vibration and this motion we can also call that as oscillatory motion and this oscillation or vibration the number of oscillation per second is called as frequency of oscillation that is in one second how many vibration takes place or how many oscillation takes place it is called as frequency of oscillation and this frequency is expressed in hertz and its symbol is hz if we tell frequency of 1 hertz it means in one second one oscillation take place if we tell frequency of 20 hertz it means in one second there is 20 oscillation occur in one second means frequency of 20 hertz so frequency is number of oscillation per second what children and then we have learned about loud and pitch so first let's revise loudness so we have learned that loudness of sound it depends on amplitude that is what is amplitude the maximum displacement of a particle from its mean position in either direction isn't it so when the ampl amplitude is large the sound produced is loud when the amplitude is small the sound produced is feeble loud opposite feeble so it depends upon amplitude amplitude is large sound produced will be loud and if the amplitude is small the sound produced is feeble and if you see this graph the first graph indicate that the displacement of a particle amplitude is small so it leads to feeble sound or you can call that a soft sound and in second graph you see that amplitude is more large so it leads to louder sound and then we have learned about shrillness or otherwise called as pitch of a sound so pitch or shrillness it depends upon frequency what is frequency number of vibration isn't it and if the frequency of vibration is higher if it is more then we can call that as with that as that uh, it leads to shrillness or you can call high pitch sound if frequency of vibration is lower the sound has low pitch got it and we have learned with very many example example of drum and whistle and drum as the vibration frequency is less then it is called that low frequency leads to low pitch sound on the other hand whistle has a high frequency so it produces higher pitch sound and a bird if you hear bird makes high pitch sound what it means it has a more high frequency whereas lion lion makes a low pitched sound means the frequency uh, the sound its sound frequency of its sound is very low got it but you can tell if the frequency is less the amplitude will be more so it leads to loudness if the sound is loud then it means it has a low pitched sound got it if the sound is feeble means it has a it, uh, it has high pitched sound or shrillness and if you see here uh, frequency of uh, the first graph indicates frequency is less and that is why it leads to low pitched sound and next graph indicates more frequency more vibration it leads to high pitched sound or shrilled sound uh, so more frequency high pitch less frequency 
low pitch sound and so children so if you compare loudness and pitch the sound loudness of sound depends upon amplitude of vibration if amplitude is less sound is feeble amplitude is more sound is loud and the unit of loudness of is called as decibel and the pitch of a sound depends upon frequency of vibration if frequency is less it produces low pitch sound example sound of a drum sound of an adult etc if the frequency is more the sound has a high pitch sound and example sound of a whistle sound of a baby etc and how do we uh, this differentiate loudness and pitch or pitch and loudness so whatever we have learned let's uh, do that comparison of pitch and loudness so pitch depends upon the frequency of sound loudness depends upon the amplitude of sound pitch if the you can write if the uh, frequency is more or if the pitch of a sound is how our uh, ears react with the frequency of a sound and loudness it uh, it leads to loudness means uh, it depends upon amplitude isn't it that uh, displacement so it depends upon the energy of the sound wave pitch of a sound helps in recognizing whether the sound is shriller means high pitch or flatter or low pitch shriller means high pitch sound opposite of shriller is flat low pitch sound and loudness of sound help us to recognize whether the sound is louder or feeble and here you can see that the high frequency means more uh, vibration that uh, it leads to shorter wavelength it leads to shriller sound low frequency flatter longer wavelength it leads to flatter sound the same way high amplitude louder sound and low amplitude it leads to feeble sound or you can say tell soft sound or feeble sound okay children now let's learn about audible and inaudible sound we know that we need vibrating body to produce sound isn't it so can we hear the sound of all vibrating bodies whenever body vibrates that in if all vibrating bodies whatever uh, it uh, body vibe whatever the object vibrates and can we hear their sound so the fact is that the sound of frequency less than about 20 vibration per second that is in one second if it, uh, 20 vibration should be there if it is less than 20 vibration so we know that it is denoted by hertz isn't it so it is 20 hertz cannot be detected by human ear we cannot hear that sound so the sound whose frequency is less than 20 hertz what do you mean by less than frequency less than 20 hertz in one second the vibration is less than 20 got that so it is if it is less than 20 hertz we cannot hear that sound such sounds are called as inaudible sound we cannot hear inaudible sound on the other hand the sound frequencies higher than 20000 vibrations per second 20000 vibration per second that is in one second 20000 vibration more than 20000 vibration if it takes place we cannot hear that also not audible to our human ear got it so in between this range if it is less than 20 hertz we cannot hear if it is more than 20000 hertz we cannot hear 20000 hertz otherwise you can write as 20 kilohertz one and the same more than 20000 hertz also we cannot hear so these two ranges are called as inaudible sound so in between the range between 20 hertz to 20000 hertz of frequency of sound only can be heard by human so this sound we can call we call that as audible sound for children so sound we can uh, divided into 
two types audible sound and inaudible sound what is audible sound or sound which we can hear what uh, which type of sound we can hear the sound with frequency from 20 hertz to 20000 hertz so this range from 20 hertz to 20000 hertz we can hear so this frequency of sound are called as audible sound and what is inaudible sound sound which we cannot hear is called as inaudible sound so example you can write sound with frequency less than 20 hertz or sound with frequency more than 20000 hertz we cannot hear so these sounds are called as inaudible sound for children and if you see that inaudible sound so again if you see the sound what is inaudible sound the sound of frequency less than 20 hertz below 20 hertz so this sound we can call that as infra sound but again inaudible sound you can divide into two types infra sound and ultra sound what is infra sound the sound of whose frequency is less than 20 hertz we call that as infra sound which we that is inaudible we cannot hear and the sound with frequency is more than 20000 hertz is called as ultrasound so this ultrasound also inaudible sound and but some animals can hear sounds of frequency higher than 20000 hertz so higher than 20000 hertz what we call that as ultrasound so dog have this dogs have this ability to hear that ultrasonic sound so police use high frequency whistles which dogs can hear but humans cannot so by this they can uh, use utilize dogs for finding criminals etc okay so dogs have the ability to hear ultrasonic sound what is ultrasonic sound the sound with whose uh, frequency is more than 20000 hertz it is inaudible to human but dogs have the ability to hear that sound and with this the ultrasonic sound ultrasound by using this ultrasonic sound many equipment is used to investigating as well as for finding out many medical problems so children till now uh, in this session we have learned about audible sound and inaudible sound audible sound is a sound which we can hear it has frequency range between 20 hertz to 20000 hertz what is 20 that is between 20 and 20000 vibration per second and inaudible sound the sound which we cannot hear is called as inaudible sound it has a frequency less than 20 hertz and more than 20000 hertz that is for one second less than 20 vibration will be there or it will be more than 20000 vibration per second so those sound we cannot hear so that sound is called as inaudible sound and the sound with uh, whose frequency is more than 20000 hertz is called as ultrasonic sound and the sound whose frequency less than 20 hertz is called as infrasound and some animals like dog can hear ultrasonic sound and even bird, bats it produces ultrasonic sound okay children now we'll uh, compare the uh, in inaudible sound that is inaudible sound can be divided into two types infrasound and ultrasonic sound this infrasound what is infrasound the sound having frequency range below 20 hertz is called as infrasound and what is ultrasonic sound the sound whose uh, frequency range about 20 hertz 20000 hertz or you can write as 20 kilohertz any way will do 20 about 20000 hertz are called as ultrasound then next difference we have learned infrasound cannot be heard by human and even ultrasound also because of high frequency we cannot it cannot be heard by 
human. Then infrasound, some animals like giraffe, rhinos, and whales, they use infrasound to communicate. The same way, bats, dogs, and cats, they use ultrasound to communicate. Then infrasound waves are used to treat myopia in kids, that is short-sightedness. Some uh, this uh, defective eyesight, this can be cured by infrasound, myopia, short-sightedness. And ultrasound can also be used for various purposes, such as identifying abnormalities in human body. Uh, any uh, abnormality happen uh, occur in human body that can be identified by ultrasound as well as it is also used in sonar sound navigation ranging and this what is that it is uh, uh, by used in submarine by use submarine the, by with the technique of this sonar uh, sound navigation and ranging they uses this ultrasound to find out any uh, object where, whether it is present under the sea or not isn't it so this way infrasound and ultrasonic sound are useful in different ways